okay um good morning all the online students i hope the audio is fine now yes it's fine now it's clear okay success good to see you in the class i always in the class <laughs> yeah well thank you all right so john is also saying that it helped improve my prayer life and the way i used to pray before so that's the whole point this course is not just a theory lesson but it has to do more with developing one's own prayer life so that's what we are looking at as the outcome of the prayer and intercession course so please take time to make some changes i know the campus residents here we have an early morning prayer time group prayer personal prayer so if you can apply these principles you will find that there is so much that you're going to benefit from so i encourage all of us to apply it don't just come for this course as a theory lesson okay so in the last class we looked at the lord jesus and his manner of praying and how much he depended on prayer prayer was very important to him not just as a means to receive from the father but more as a relationship so a strong relationship for jesus with the father meant a strong prayer life and so he always prayed we saw how he prayed early in the morning we saw how he took time out to go into the wilderness and pray how he took time even when people wanted him for other reasons he was not interested in fame but he went away to spend time with the father and prayer must be learned from the life of jesus today what we will look at is the different kinds of prayer even though we say that um, you know pray to god there are many categories of prayers and one must understand all these types or kinds of prayers when we look at ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 would anyone like to read it aloud please ephesians 6 verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all Uh, perseverance and supplication for all the saints wonderful so ephesians 6:18 the nkjv version says praying always with all prayer all prayer simply means there are many categories that come under prayer another version good speed version translation it's given in our notes that puts it like this use every kind of prayer so under the umbrella of prayer prayer is a large term there are categories of the types of prayers can someone read for us first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 First Timothy chapter two, verse one. Therefore, I exhort first of all that application, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks to be made of all men. Okay, uh, could you come back again? Read it slowly. Therefore. I exhort first of all application prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men all right so here there are there is a mention of the different categories supplications prayers intercessions giving of thanks these all come under prayer and we're going to see what are the other kinds that would also come under this how does this help us so somewhere our understanding of prayer might only be i'm going to ask god and receive from god and that's about it so if we do only that kind of praying how long can we pray
maybe 10 minutes nearly all of our asking is done then what then which kind of prayer would we like to pray to god there are other kinds of prayers and when we look at the life of jesus and he spent so much time in prayer so much of time was he only asking god god give this give that father i need this i need that obviously no he spent the whole night in prayer so there's more than just asking and receiving that happened so what are all the prayers that he may have prayed to the father the first one of course is asking and receiving that's the idea that many of us have about prayer because from a young age we are taught our parents tell us you want something you ask jesus and that's how we learn to pray okay jesus make me well jesus help me study better jesus uh, you know make me a good child that's how we learn to pray as children but as we grow up somewhere we stop with just that ask god and get something from him this however is not wrong in fact jesus said in the lord's prayer he told us you ask for what you need ask the father for your daily bread so asking and receiving is a good prayer it is included as one of the categories let's look at asking and receiving in matthew chapter 7 jesus spoke about asking and receiving so matthew chapter 7 verses 7 through 11 we'll have to read a lot of scriptures so please be ready and i request uh, many of us to take turns just take the mic go ahead and read it matthew chapter 7 verses 7 through 11 another person can be ready with mark 11 24. ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened or or what man or if he asks um sorry or what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish he will not give him a snake will he if you if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him amen um thank you juliana as we read god reveals himself as a father and he says it in three different ways he's encouraging us to ask but then he puts it in this way ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you so the meaning is god is saying you come to me whatever your needs are you come to me and i will give it to you will a good father not provide for their children god being a good father will definitely provide every good thing for us and so god is encouraging us to ask somewhere in our mindset we may have come to the conclusion that asking god for something is not very spiritual you know if i'm a very mature believer i should not be asking god okay god i need this i need that give me this give me that doesn't sound very spiritual however god has taught in his word that because he is our father we can ask him for our needs nothing wrong with that and nothing unspiritual about it so you and i can definitely seek god to receive for whatever you know we require in our lives mark 11 verse 24 another person please go ahead and read that passage therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them all right so it's a given god has already stated that whenever you ask meaning it's a part of prayer it's a part of prayer it's understood that there will be some asking in our prayer but how should we ask what else is connected to a believe so when we ask we must believe prayer should be made with 
faith. Okay, so this is about the prayer of asking and receiving. And a lot of our praying is this because every day uh, there are things that we are trusting God for. We can ask and receive from the Lord. The second kind of prayer is what is known as the prayer of supplication. Supplication is an earnest request. You know, when we, we say something like, please give me, or um, if we didn't get good marks in the exams, you know, it's happened like you go to the teacher and you say, ma'am, please reconsider. Please look at my paper again. Please reevaluate it. Right? And if they give us mercy, wonderful. We are happy. So supplication is an earnest request. It's a plea for mercy. It's as if we are crying out and we're saying, please, can you do this? Or even if we're not using the word, please, uh, you know, we, we are reaching out with that kind of an earnestness to God and saying, God, I'm counting on you. Uh, you are the God of mercy. You are the gracious God. Move on my behalf. So it's an, a prayer of asking. That's, that's true. But it's also an asking with earnestness. That's what supplication is. So we read earlier, uh, 1 Timothy 2.1, where um, uh, Paul said that people must pray using supplication. What are some supplications that we may have? You know, we may pray for our unsaved family members. We may pray for um, our church to thrive. We may pray for our city. We may pray, um, you know, for uh, different causes, Lord, justice, uh, Lord, mercy, healing. Many things. We are earnestly crying out to God and saying, Heavenly Father, you can do this. You are able. Do it, Lord. So we are seeking Him earnestly. There is a prayer in the Word of God where one comes to Jesus with this kind of a prayer. And uh, uh, it is those two blind men. There is an account from Matthew chapter 20 verses 29 to 34. So one of us could please read out this section. And as they went out from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, that they should hold their peace. But they cried out the more, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What, what will ye that I should do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. And Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and straight away they received the sight and followed him. All right. Thank you. So there, you know, we are seeing how they approached Jesus. They needed to be able to see. And so they cried out to the Lord Jesus. He asks them, what do you want? And they say, God, help us to see. He has compassion on them. He has mercy on them. And uh, he touched their eyes. But all this as a response to them crying out, Son of David, have mercy on us. So the same thing applies to us. There are different situations where we may be crying out earnestly to the Lord. Maybe in different stages of our lives, uh, we are seeking God for a breakthrough. And we are saying, Lord, you've know, you got to do something in my ministry, Lord. You've got to do something in my personal life. You've got to do something in my family, oh God. Things can't be like this forever. Lord, you've got to do something in my finances. So we are earnestly crying out to the Lord. It's more than saying, God, I want this. You know, I need this. It's more than that. So in the life of Jesus, the time when he cried out for mercy to the Father, when was that? When did he like pray a lot and you know there's a lot of emotion involved? 
get some ne that's right in get some ne in fact the book of hebrews records it in hebrews chapter 5 verses 7 through 9 i'll quickly uh, make a reference to it it says he offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death so can you imagine can you imagine jesus is in getsemane sometimes we see the photo we're like you know people have sketched uh, ima- they've imagined how jesus would have been so you see this man kneeling there's a stone and you kind of see him kneeling and praying he looks quite calm in the in the image but the book of hebrews says he was crying out to god vehement cries supplication tears so it was intense intense and he was saying father if you want even now i can be saved from this terrible death why did jesus pray like this because we know the bible says though he was the son of god he was fully man fully god fully man so as a man he had all of these emotions these struggles so, so he goes up to the father and he says father if at all it is possible please let me not die this brutal death on the cross how did he ask the father he didn't simply say it hebrews says supplications vehement cries vehement is like you're breathing hard you're sighing right like you're breathing hard and you're crying out to the father and tears jesus was crying wow that's that's unimaginable but very honest the scriptures are very honest about what jesus went through but think about this he wanted the father to hopefully change the plan but later on you know he decides not my will but yours be done what a great surrender it is isn't it when we want something so badly and we're asking the father lord give me this give me this give me this and the father reveals to us no that's not my will my will is something else and we surrender to it and we say okay father not my will not what i want so badly not what i desire so much i'm just giving it back into your hands lord you do according to your will in my life that is the testimony of jesus supplications meaning earnest cry plea for mercy father have mercy even jesus prayed these prayers and it's possible that we may find ourselves praying such prayers for the different needs or situations in our own lives okay and um, thank god you know there's nothing wrong with earnestly seeking after god there are two more verses here not related to supplication but i just want to bring it to our attention verse 8 of hebrews 5 it says though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered jesus was limited to this human body and we know he was not born in a palace so he was not given luxuries of a royal um uh, you know sort of a an heir of the father he became a normal a regular person in fact the carpenter who worked hard for his own life for his living we may ask the question why lord why why did you go through the sufferings of mankind like each one of us go through but scriptures tell us something interesting here he learned obedience he was already perfect already perfect perfectly submitted to the father but going through life life's challenges in the right way and yielding to the father submitting to the father even jesus learned obedience obedience is something you and i 
can and must learn in our lives bringing our flesh under subjection and letting the spirit rule jesus learned it that's how he was able to come to that place and say i surrender to your will god okay so even the son of god learned obedience so sometimes we find ourselves in situations where things are not all that smooth or luxurious but what can we learn in those seasons jesus learned obedience through the sufferings limitations that he experienced so you and i can also learn obedience to the father through the challenges that we go through yeah then of course you know it says that um, uh, he was perfected and he became the author of salvation to all who obey so are you with me prayer of asking and receiving clear prayer of supplication clear let's look at the third one here prayer of intercession okay there's a question here in the chat um king hezekiah's prayer and god adds 15 more years to him is that a supplication i would say yes it's a plea for mercy so it is a supplication now talking about intercession what is intercession what is intercession exactly the simple answer is praying for another person not just me not you know um you know uh, like me myself my family my life my career always me me my my those are the kind of prayers we get stuck in but intercession is when i'm praying for somebody other than me that's hard that's hard uh if we observe our own prayer life we may find that most of the time is dedicated to me myself i me myself that's all we are concerned about but god is saying we read ephesians 6:18 prayer for all the saints pray for all the saints who are the saints yeah anyone who is born again is a saint that makes each of you a saint okay you can look at your neighbor you know their names you can just say saint and then their name can we do that <laughs> some are not convinced i don't see any okay so since we are all saints ephesians 6:18 says all kinds of prayer be watchful in prayer for all the saints meaning our brothers and sisters people who are born again we need to pray for them as well it's not enough just to pray for ourselves and our needs so we need to dedicate some time to pray for others and we've seen two scriptures already ephesians 6 verse 18 which says you know all these categories of prayers pray for the saints we also saw first timothy 2:1 which says intercessions you know one of the categories intercessions it needs to be made for others when we look at the life of job job went through many difficulties he had major losses he lost his um resources he lost his all his all his belongings his property his children he also lost his health so here is a man in great adversity what is he looking for in this great adversity that's the question we are asking let's read two passages here job 9 verse 32 and 22 
Okay, okay just uh, you can just read um, 32. Are we oh, he is not a man as I am that I should answer him and we should come together in judgment. Okay. Oh, he is not a man as I am that I may answer him that we should go to court together. Okay, I think we missed the reference there. All right, let's read uh, Job 16, verse 21. Probably there seems to be a Job 16, verse 21. Job 16, what, ma? 16, 21. Okay, Job 16, verse 21. He begs God on behalf of a human as a person for his friends. Okay, great. So, Job 16, verse 21, I'll just quickly reread -read that. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleads for his neighbor. So this is the desire of Job. We talked about the losses that he had. And during those losses, he's, uh, he's hoping, he's just hoping that there is somebody who would go to God and plead with God the way one would plead with their friend. Now, we all know that people go through different challenges. Okay. Maybe some are usual. They are in a stage of life where they are seeking God for their career. They are seeking God for, you know, maybe uh, good financial decisions or they're seeking God for a life partner. We know their needs. And so we uphold them. We pray for our friends. We pray for our family members, believers in church, that God, you answer their prayers, you bless their lives. But then there are also times when people are going through challenges for very difficult issues for a prolonged period of time. Maybe sickness is one of them because in that home, people are struggling every day. There is some or the other issue because of sickness or, um, uh, you know, there could be grief when someone's lost their loved ones. Okay. So I remember once, uh, this was one of my close friends, they're a young couple. And uh, unfortunately, you know, they uh, lost their very first baby. And uh, it was devastating, like for all of us, there were many reasons why it happened. Uh, but it was devastating for all of us. And in that season, we would just keep in touch with them to encourage them, you know, go meet with them. And I remember uh, my friend talking to me and saying, you know, for a good number of months, I couldn't pray. I just couldn't pray because there were so many questions, emotions. I couldn't think. And the only thing I was hoping for, like Job, Job 16, 21, he says, I just wish there was a man pleading with God on behalf of a man, just the way a man, you know, uh, pleads with his neighbor. So all she wanted was, I'm not able to pray. I really hope and wish somebody is praying for me. Okay, and thank God for a believing church community and a church family at that time. We were able to uphold one another. And very often, God reminds us, you know, suddenly we think of somebody. Have you ever wondered, why am I thinking of this person? Maybe God wants you to pray for them. Just stop for a moment and pray for that person. Whenever you see a face like in your mind, suddenly you thought of that person. Why? Oh, okay, let me pray. At the least, let me just pray for that person. Who knows what people are going through, how challenging their situations are. But intercession is something we can do for people. If we can't do anything else, at least let's pray. If we don't have to go around telling them, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, no need to do all that. Just pray, quietly pray. We know their problems. We meet them in church every Sunday. You know, we, we see them in class every day. You know their struggles. Pray for them. Pray for them. Intercede. Inter intercession. Praying for another person is also one of the prayers. So in our prayer time, we can give a lot, some space 
praying for others. Write down. You know, generally when we are walking around, people suddenly come and say, please remember me in prayer. You know, I'm, I'm going for a job interview. Please remember me in prayer. We are doing house construction. We could jot that down. Okay? If we said yes, please pray. Okay, most of the time to be polite, what do we say? Sure, sure, brother, we'll pray for you. Next thing we've forgotten. We don't remember, oh, what were you doing? Why did you pray? We've forgotten. So we shouldn't do that. Don't say yes if you can't pray. If you say yes, then pray. <laughs> Maybe we can maintain a notebook or something. Just write down, oh, okay, so and so, this is the need. Let's pray. So pray for one another. Uh, and that is about the prayer of intercession. If you have any questions, please stop me. Uh, I'm just going to continue. So if I see a hand raised, we will pause. Next, we come to the prayer of thanksgiving. We've seen that as a category of prayer in 1 Timothy chapter 2, Philippians 4, 6. Can one of us read that aloud, please? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for thinking, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Mm. So be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then he says, you know, the peace of God will, um, uh, that it will fill our hearts. So in exchange for our anxiety, so what, what is the antidote for anxiety? Prayer. Prayer with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Don't be anxious, okay? But pray with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Then what will God do? In exchange for our anxiety, He will give us peace. That passes all understanding. Peace that passes all understanding. How to have peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of life's storms. When we are a praying person. When we pray. When we pray a lot. What happens? God gives us peace. Now how to present our requests. Paul is also saying with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Romans 4.20, when Abraham was believing God for Isaac. Romans 4.20 says, he gave thanks to God. He gave glory to God. Before Isaac was born, think about this. Okay, we are believing God for something. Okay, we are believing God for, um, let's say, you know, some, some breakthrough. Breakthrough has not yet come. Isaac is not here, nowhere close. But what is Abraham doing? Giving glory to God. He strengthened himself. So thanksgiving, before the answer arrives, can actually strengthen our faith. It's not easy at all to do. Because you don't see the results yet. But even then, what did Abraham do? He's the father of our faith. We'll talk about him in the faith course. Before the answer, he gave thanks to God. Father, I thank you. Before Lazarus was raised from the dead, before God raised Lazarus from the dead, Jesus says in uh, uh, John 11, Father, I thank you. You always hear me. The confidence in God saying, God, I know even now Lazarus is going to come back to life. Before Lazarus comes back to life, Father, I thank you. This is where we all struggle. Once Lazarus is alive, we can say thank you, Jesus. Before Lazarus is alive, it's very hard to say thank you, Jesus. But it's a part of our prayer life. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Before the results are here. Before the fulfillment of the promise. Before the answer to the prayer. We must train ourselves to give thanks. To give praise unto the Lord. It's very powerful. It's very powerful if we can do that. So whenever we consider prayer, uh, thanksgiving, we can also look at it like 
um, you know, I call it the sandwich technique. Okay, so what is the sandwich technique? It's like the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're beginning with glorifying God. We're beginning with thanking God, worshipping God. Thanksgiving is a form of worship, isn't it? So start off with worship. Start off with thanksgiving. Then we go into um, prayer of asking and receiving, prayer of supplication, intercession, so many things that we need to pray. And then what did Jesus teach us in the end of the Lord's Prayer? For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beginning with thanksgiving, ending with thanksgiving, magnifying God, glorifying God. But in between are all the requests and other kinds of prayers. So even our prayer time can look like this. Start with thanksgiving, pray the different requests, close off with thanksgiving. So that's like a sandwich, right? Like you put two, the two uh, pieces of bread on uh, the top and below, and then you have the patty in the middle. So somewhat like that, we can just take time to thank the Lord. Even thanking is a part of prayer. All right, so uh, we can move on to the next kind of prayer, unless uh, there is something anyone wants to say. The next kind of prayer is what is called as the prayer of consecration. Prayer of consecration. Matthew chapter 26, verses 37 to 44. Could one of us read the passage, please? And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Now, Nevertheless, not as I will, but you as you, you, uh, you as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, "What could you want? Could you not watch with uh, me on our what what she pray, lest you enter into temptations? The spirit indeed it is willing, but the flesh is weak." Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, you will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Okay. Thank you. So here is that prayer of Gethsemane and the surrendering of the will of Jesus to the Father. Whenever we surrender, that's called as consecration. So what did Jesus do? He surrendered his will. Many times we may pray prayers where we are surrendering our will or we may pray prayers surrendering other things. For example, um, we may surrender our skill. You know, I was listening to uh, one particular singer and she was saying, hey, I've dedicated my voice to the Lord. I don't sing any secular songs. I only sing, you know, uh, uh, Christian songs. So that is her conviction. And uh, so she has dedicated, set apart, given to the Lord her talent. We call that consecration. When you dedicate something, when you surrender something, when you hand over to the Lord and say, God, this is yours. It's dedicated only for you. What is dedication? Dedication is um, in the tabernacle of Moses. There were, there, were in, there were instruments of worship. Like, you know, you would have a cup, you would have like different things, isn't it? There was a table, showbread table, where they kept the bread and um, other things. 
Now, could they keep anything else on that table? Now, what if they stacked up some clothes on that table? It's a table. It's OK. Would that be appropriate? No, you can't do that, because there are clear instructions to Moses on how to build this table, how to set this table, how to use this table. It's dedicated. It's not an ordinary table. Once something is dedicated, it's no longer ordinary. It's for the Lord's use. That is the meaning of consecration, dedication. Now it belongs to God, you know. If something let's this is dedicated to the Lord. I can't use it for my everyday things. It's special. It's committed to the Lord. So when we are saying that our life is dedicated, I'm consecrating my life to you, O oh God. Meaning, my life is given to you, God, you express yourself through me. You live your purposes through me. It's very powerful. We are giving ourselves as objects of surrender to the Lord. And God can work through us. Those are the prayers of consecration, where we may consecrate anything, anything that God reminds us of. I want you to dedicate this. I want you to consecrate this. You know, we dedicate, consecrate spaces. OK, we build this space. We dedicate it to the Lord. It's given to the Lord. May the Lord fill this place, right? Or an instrument, something. So that is the prayer of consecration, right? So we can pray prayers. Parents, what they do? They dedicate their children. They consecrate their children and say, Lord, for the glory of your name, we are dedicating this child. So these prayers are also very powerful, very, very powerful. Uh, and time to time, the Lord may put it on our hearts to dedicate ourselves or something or, you know, if people are parents, then of course you can dedicate your children because they, God has uh, given them you to steward. So, dedication, consecration, and that is powerful. Um, and the importance, just want to bring our attention if you know of people who dedicate themselves to, um, you know, certain gods, goddesses, spirits, okay? Um, it's the opposite of the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. But what do we see in the world around us? People who have dedicated themselves to some spirit, they become an expression of that spirit, isn't it? So those spirits start to do things through the faculties of that human being. Why? Because consecration, dedica dedication has happened. So if that is the result, of consecrating to you know some spirit the same is true in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of our lord jesus it's very powerful whenever we say god i consecrate my will i dedicate myself what we are saying is god i belong to you now i am a vessel of honor for your use you can work through me now, God can work through us because we have been dedicated to the Lord. So those are the prayers of dedication. And we must and we can pray these prayers of dedication over different things. Okay. So uh, with that, we will stop for the first session. We'll take a break, come back, and continue in the different kinds of prayers. Thank you.